My wife, who we had lived with for twenty years and was the mother of three adult children in the tenth and twelfth grades, wrote to me while I was at work, asking a simple inquiry. It was, How soon can you get home? I responded by asking why. She said that we should have a serious chat. I should have gone back home, but I didn't. My office mates quickly observed that I was entirely removed from what was going on. Rebecca had to remind me that, as CEO of a network of dealerships, I was responsible for everything. When I showed her the text, she inquired whether there were any issues in my marriage or with one of the children. I had to admit that I was only aware of the normal concerns. Will asked Rebecca whether there had been any little changes in Mira's conduct. For example, when she speaks on her cell phone. Does she hang up or stop speaking when you enter the room? I didn't notice, I said, but I've always heard that the husband is the last to know. Why is she at home? Rebecca had a thought. Should not Mira be at work? I texted my wife, asking where she was. She responded that she was returning home. Something appeared weird to me. I called her at work. While I waited for an answer, I turned on the voice recorder. I asked to speak with Mira Roberts. Mira Roberts, the regional manager, had been let go from this branch, I was told. She was transferred to the headquarters at the beginning of next week. As a result, she was granted one week of paid leave to complete the required preparations. I inquired as to how long ago her promotion was announced. The lady said that it had been more than six months ago. Something did not add up. Why did she just spend four weeks at headquarters for extra training when she already worked directly for the corporation? Why wasn't the family told of her significant employment transition a few months ago? Rebecca, please answer this for me. What would your first thoughts be if your husband told you on Friday night that he had been promoted and would be transferring early following week? I said. I am asking because that is what my wife will tell me. Darn will, Rebecca responded automatically. I'd be wondering what else was going on because he had to have known this was coming for a long time. Thank you, I responded. I also thought so. Now I can go home and confront her, knowing that whatever she says should be taken with a grain of salt. I am sure she will reveal a truth concealed deep within a large pile of jewelry. Mira could sell insurance to the elephants for a dollar, knowing it would take months for them to figure out what she was hiding. Rebecca had a concerned expression on her face. She recognized that I was in a difficult situation. I didn't know what to expect but I knew I was about to have the best poker game of my life. The trouble was that I couldn't maintain a poker face while thinking about these things. I notified my wife that I was on my way. Mira and I met in high school during the first week of 10th grade. One day at lunch, one of my buddies told me that I wouldn't dare to approach and kiss the first girl I met. I did it. My reward was a slap in the face and a visit to the principal. We avoided each other following that. It was simple because we communicated in different circles. She was a big city girl, I was a local through and through. She was always up to date on current events in Kansas City, minor. That all changed the week of prom when we were both in 11th grade. I was standing in for my father's sick employee after my mother pulled him to an important occasion. He owned three tow trucks and maintained them operational around the clock. They were part of his vehicle dealership's activities. It was a hectic evening, and I was asked to help. Some idiot drove a curve too fast at Thomas's property and skidded off the road into his cornfield, severely injuring the right rear tire and rendering the car undrivable. Mr. Thomas called the police, who contacted us. It took me approximately 20 minutes to get there. When I turned around, I drove in reverse and hitched the car. The officer instructed me to transport her to the impound lot at this time. Mira was standing next to the police cruiser, drenched from the rain and wearing a completely damaged prom dress. I took off my raincoat and gave it to her. Even at that age, she was stunning. I rated it ten. I asked the officer if I could give her a ride home before heading to the parking lot. He stated they'd appreciate it because they'd be there for at least another. How? We are investigating the accident. I requested the cop to phone her parents and inform them that we had just departed. He questioned why, and I answered that we had a history, and it was best not to have doubts. Her parents opened the door as soon as we got at their home. I walked outside and assisted her down. Then he left to do his work, utterly unaware that she had taken my raincoat. We didn't say a word the entire way home. I had no idea what was said when Mira arrived home. I never asked. 
On Monday, I was seated with my normal group at school for lunch when Mira approached with a tray of food. May I join you? She said this before being asked to sit down. Can you move? She asked Rabbi. I would like to talk to William. Everyone looked at me when she sat down next to me. Mira kissed my cheek and I drew even more stares. This is to safeguard my reputation. Mira told you on Friday night that you needed to meet me after school so that I could return your cloak. I have my final gym class, therefore I will be late. I stated that if you don't want to keep David waiting, perhaps another day will work better for you. David, like his father, is no longer with us. My father dismissed him this morning. Mira responded, If I miss the bus, you will have to give me a ride home. Not an issue. I know where you live. I replied with a smile. When we came, she waited for me, exactly like her parents. Her father claimed he should appreciate my maturity in handling the matter. He then inquired why. I requested the police to tell me when we were leaving the accident scene. I had to explain the dispute. He found it funny. Mira flushed. William Robertson. Mira stated, I have been mistaken about you for more than two years because of your arrogance. Now I feel completely foolish. Is there a way I can solve this? Can I take you to a movie on Friday night? You can even select the movie. I said. We became inseparable after that. My buddies and I quickly found that she was no snob. After graduating from high school, I started working for my father and studying the automobile industry from the ground up. She started as a clerk at an insurance company and worked her way up by taking every online course that management offered. She had worked her way up the ladder and, as far as I knew, was an assistant branch manager. Mira has worked at the headquarters one week per month for the past year. Along the way, we had three daughters. Until recently, I believed life was fine. My father now allows me to handle the day-to-day -day tasks while he works to extend the empire. We had grown to operate eight Ford dealerships over the last 20 years, so I was now spending the most of my time in the office. Mira was waiting for me when I got home. I looked at the dashboard screen. It was 11.20 in the morning as I got out of my automobile. I untied my tie as I approached the door, glancing at her face. She didn't seem worried. This gave me the idea that she wasn't concerned. She expected me to completely accept what she said. Can I take off my suit to relax if I'm going to stay at home all day? I asked my wife. Or will it only take a few minutes? It will take time. So you should change. Mira spoke after changing. I came out and said, So, what happened? Mira handed me several pages of emails. I read them. Essentially, it was a conversation between Sylvia Smith, one of her female supervisors at the corporation that I had heard about, and one of her administrative assistants who was leaving on maternity leave for three months, which led to an offer to cover the role during her absence. It was wordy, as if her supervisor was attempting to coerce her into accepting after reading. I set the sheets down and went to fetch a beer. Under pressure, I accepted their offer. I start on Monday. As I understand it, I can fly out on Sunday and return on Friday late. The corporation got me a furnished apartment, which they leased for a while. Mira said that the monthly payment was less than the weekly one. As I opened the beer, I saw the papers were missing. Mira, where are the papers? I have not finished reading yet, I asked. She pulled them out of her briefcase. Sorry, I thought you were finished. As soon as she gave them back to me. Her cell phone rang as she answered. She exited the room after introducing her employer, Jake, from the office. I went into the office and scanned the papers onto a Canon printer before transferring them to my personal laptop while I waited for her. I thought about it. She didn't grasp what I saw. Who called? It was Sylvia Smith. Everything she's told me thus far has been a purposeful lie. For whatever reason, she did not want me to know the truth. I texted Rebecca to tell her what I found out. Mira talks on the phone with her new employer, Sylvia Smith, at the corporate office in Annapolis, Maryland. She answered a few minutes later, saying she got the information on Google, and the corporation's website sent a message to a distant cousin who lives nearby to check whether he had heard anything. Mira had still not returned, so I went on to her briefcase as I waited for her. I began my search. It was fairly deserted, as I had imagined. Her notepad is kept at Annapolis address and phone number without a name. I hurriedly took a photo of it with my phone before closing it. Sorry, there has been a change of plans. Mira reappeared and said, I'll have to fly out early Sunday morning. Jake just informed me that Sylvia Smith will meet with me individually to assist me settle in before my first day on the job. 
Isn't it all already decided? I replied strongly. Mira answered, It's not like that. Actually, you must relax in order for it to be sudden. It is evident that there is something you are not telling me. If it was really last minute, you'd be panicked. I shouted this upon colliding with her. At that time, I noticed an expression on her face that I hadn't seen in years. He last appeared after I informed her that Stan Johnston had claimed they were having an affair. Then he claimed our second daughter was not mine. When the dust settled on the story, we discovered that he was attempting to defraud us all of family money. I grabbed the car keys and went to the door. Where are you going? Mira finally inquired, expressing worry for our girls so they would not have to walk home. I shouted. It took me ten minutes to arrive to school. I stopped by the office to inform them that I was arriving unexpectedly to pick up my daughters. They will inform them during the day's closing announcements. I checked our financial accounts. There was no unaccounted money. We didn't use checks to pay bills. I placed a late notice on it. No check will be honored without my consent. I've also urged them to limit cash withdrawals at all branches, but this one. My three little angels were pleasantly pleased once we loaded them up. We visited Dairy Queen for ice cream. After that, we headed to a neighboring park where they could enjoy their burger and fries. They persuaded me to buy for them. We had a talk with the father and daughters. It was clear that they were unaware of their mother's upcoming departure. We were out of the house for over 30 minutes. I called Mira, but her phone was busy. I pondered if I'd go home and buy another version. Dad, what's wrong? I asked Diana, my eldest child. Your mother called me at home to say she had accepted a three-month post in the corporate office. She's leaving on Sunday morning, I said. She said it happened just this week. Other sources argue such is not the case. I'm informed it's a permanent promotion and she's been in the role for at least six months. My three daughters had the same expression. It was a look of absolute shock. Are mom and you getting divorced? Asked about my middle one. You had an affair. Did your mother find out? My God. I assumed it originated from the mouth of a newborn. No, I haven't had an affair, but thank you for asking. There is no evidence of a prospective divorce because none of our funds are disappearing. That's all I know for sure. That she was lying, I responded. So when we come home, all we know is that whatever your mother told me may not be true. Could it be that the folks you were speaking with were lying? Darcy asked. Listen to this and let me know what you think. I watched my three girls as they listened to me speak with the receptionist in my wife's office. Sometimes it's better to let folks establish their own opinions. Everyone watched her leave for work. Dawn addressed Dad. How did she use her free time this week? Your guess is as good as mine because I really don't know, I responded. I can figure out what's going on, but I'll need to recruit pros, which will take time. For now, girls, we must determine what to do. We can't prevent her from leaving, no matter what, Deanna said. We do not have enough information to make a sound conclusion. Darcy replied, I hate it when you tell us to wait and see. Because you must first determine your ability to complete the task before agreeing. You cannot find out here, and you may not receive the necessary information. Don speculated that Mom might be having an affair, or maybe she's haunted and requires assistance. Just then, my cell phone rang. It was my wife. Where are you now? At the park. The children are eating hamburgers and fries. They all received ice cream. I felt since it was unannounced, you'd need plenty of time to prepare. I said, that way you won't have to cook. We decide how our family will handle things while you are gone. Why didn't you call to let me know? You're making it sound like I'm not returning, Mira explained in her defense. You understand that is not true. I wanted to scream, but instead I bit my tongue. As I listened to her, I asked myself why she said this. Was there a mental lapse? The kids will inform you that I attempted to phone you twice. You were conversing on the phone with someone. I informed them about your ideas. They are also wondering what is going on because you are so quiet. I responded. We will see you when we arrive home. I sent Rebecca a message requesting her to find out who resided at this address and verify the phone number, including a photo of him, in less than five minutes. She responded, This is Sylvia Smith's home and mobile number. It was sad to see my kids talking to their mother. Each of them worked extremely hard to persuade their mother to tell them the truth. We just heard her say the same thing over and over again on Sunday morning after we saw her board the plane. I started to relax. My wife was unaware that my father and I had hired a private detective to follow her. My mother and father came over on Sunday to see how we were doing. 
My children found it difficult to comprehend that their mother had been lying to all of us for more than six months. No matter what you say to your child, he will instantly assume it is his responsibility. My mother had to leave her bedroom on sometimes to hide her emotions. On Monday, after dropping off my girls, I drove around the block, parked, and walked back. I sought to talk with Karen Wilson, a girl's parenting expert. I told her what had happened over the weekend and urged her to keep a watch on them in case their emotions became out of control and they couldn't manage. She replied she would and congratulated me for being attentive to their needs. When I returned to the office, I read that Rebecca had learned about Sylvia Smith. Her father chaired the board of directors. She forged her own way through the corporation. She had been president of the company for four years after starting as an actuary. It was a difficult week, but my children and I made it through. Two women we occasionally employed agreed to assist. They cleaned the house and did the laundry twice a week. Mira called the girls twice and me once. She returned home on Saturday morning and flew away on Sunday afternoon. Due to flight arrangements, she spent less than 24 hours at home after leaving. All of my daughters talked about what they were attempting to grasp. Why did she come home? It seemed as though she were present, yet she wasn't. Her mind was preoccupied with other issues. She was their mother, yet she was not. I couldn't disagree with what they were saying. When I went to hug her, I ran into a chilly wall of ice. I noticed that her family was unusually silent during this period, which made me wonder what they were told. We had just arrived home when my cell phone rang in the car. It was my dad. Hello, Dad. We just saw Mira off. I planned to take my girls out for pizza later. Do you want to join? I said, not allowing him the opportunity to speak. No. I just wanted to remind you that we have a meeting with a lawyer tomorrow morning at 9 to discuss the car dealership I want to buy. He said, Hello, gals. Grandma and I are sending you love from the back seat. The girls. And he spoke for a long as I drove them to our favorite pizzeria. My father took my hint and changed the topic. I thought it was brilliantly played, Dad. Later, after the girls had showers and gone to bed, I called him. We received the initial report. Well, it's not as horrible as we expected. My father says it's worse. The affair began even before her month-long training there. We have videos of them together at bars, dancing, holding hands, and displaying public affection in a very sexual manner. They were even caught on tape walking into an adult store and purchasing romantic toys. I was devastated, but what was his name? Dad. So what does he do? It is not him, Will. Her employer is Sylvia Smith. My father stated that they lived together as wife and wife. Mira removed her wedding ring as soon as she boarded the plane for the first time. I dropped my cell phone, unable to talk. I felt emotionally drained from somewhere. Diana picked up the phone. She informed her grandfather that I was broken. I believe she. She forced her granddad to reveal the truth. We spent the next few hours crying together until no tears remained. When mom and dad arrived at 6 a.m., Diana and I were still sleeping on the living room couch, holding hands. We were awakened after making coffee. Diane spoke while I was still waking up and gathering strength. Grandpa. Am I old enough to pursue these losers with my lawyer? Can I sue their employer and both of them, either together or separately? Diana asked. My parents and I were startled. Her remark was not what we expected. Yes, I think so. However, before I can give you a solid response, we will need to confirm it with a lawyer who specializes in this area. Her grandfather responded. Where has this come from? With my father's agreement, I'm taking law as an elective in school. Diana stated, I am going to legally destroy Sylvia and my mother if I can. I've had students for over two years, but I won't be able to acquire my unrestricted driver's license until I turn 18. I want to be a lawyer. This comment awoke me. I entered the office and started the computer. I went to Facebook and typed my wife's name. This resulted in two Facebook pages. I knew about the first, but not the second. Her mistake was that she utilized the same photograph. It debuted eight months ago. When Dad read this, he called the private investigative business and left a voicemail detailing what we had discovered within an hour. It was hacked. It listed pages and pages of event timings and locations, all of which were confirmed on Silversmith's Facebook page. Both may be utilized in court. The losers admitted to their eight-month unusual romance on their personal Facebook accounts. Each page identified the other's consorts. 
Mira's second Facebook profile contained no mention of the children or me. I hadn't realized Diane was reading it at the same time as me. Moms led double lives. Diane whispered in my ear, The question I have to ask is which one is the real one for her? Mom cooked us all brunch. Following that, we told Darcy what we knew. I called the school and informed them that all of my daughters would be missing while I was handling the problem. My eldest daughter handed me the telephone. I say it's Karen Wilson and I have no idea what to say. I said, stay with your sisters. I will be returning soon. I enter the office and close the door. Hello, Miss Wilson. I asked, how can I help you today? I observed the children had been called in for a day off. I wondered if this had anything to do with what we were discussing. She said yes. We discovered that she had been having an affair for at least the previous eight months. I added, we found out about it last night after she left. We were trying to figure out why she had come at all, given how far away and bewildered she was. Can I inquire whether he is older or younger? Miss Wilson inquired. Any suggestions for how I should address this, if asked? It takes quite some time with kid gloves and tiny steps. It's more difficult, as I described. My wife is not having an affair with a man or her female employer. Darn it. Sorry for the oversight. Both your girls and you must be crushed, she responded. For a straight man, it must have hurt just as much as it did my parents when my brother came out. I was on the telephone. Diana went to bed. When I realized I was getting my first information from the detective's report, I couldn't bear it and dropped the phone. Diane found me and asked the caller what was going on. It was not a pleasant night for any of us. Karen Wilson remarked, Add my name to your contact list. If your wife concealed this aspect of herself in plain sight, you might expect to be slandered by your common relatives and friends. I told Dad what Karen Wilson had said. Then I needed to explain who she was. He called our divorce lawyers and scheduled a meeting for us for one o'clock that day. All three of my girls were getting ready to leave. The company sent me an email with an attached file which we printed. It took eight months of their Facebook accounts to prove that their relationship began long before her alleged month-long training. It was fascinating to see my oldest daughter use her understanding of civil law to pose questions that seemed to stump the divorce lawyer. It became evident that all of my daughters were of legal age to launch a claim for disruption of family connections against Sylvia Smith and her insurer, if their human resources. When the criteria were breached, I contacted Rebecca to see if she could obtain a copy. She said she had already taken care of it last week. My distant cousin had sent me a copy, along with a lengthy account of Sylvia and Mary's relationship. Twenty minutes later, the lawyers were examining him. This only applied to people who were part of the corporation. Rebecca's distant cousin gave us a plethora of information. I played the recorded conversation with the receptionist, which I had saved from Facebook, messenger chats, emails Mira had sent me, and my own recordings. We could prove that they exploited their positions at the firm to manipulate me and my girls for at least six months. As a result, each of my daughters intends to sue my wife, her lover, and their employment for violating the family tie. I filed for divorce from Mira on the grounds of abandonment and adultery, her lover for interfering with the marriage and severing family ties, and her work for violating his own human relations regulations. The most essential element was that one of the accused served as the company's president. They couldn't say they weren't aware of the issue. Diane stunned us all when she suggested we needed a court order to prevent Sylvia Smith and Mira Roberts from being fired until all of the court proceedings were handled. We didn't want the firm to give up those two to lower its liabilities. Our divorce lawyers were stunned. It was an unexpected move, but it made sense. We left the lawyer's office at 3 p.m., and the four of us headed out for an early dinner. Darcy, who was always sharp-tongued, told us we needed to get new cell phone numbers but keep the old ones operational but switched off until they arrived. This way, if our mother attempts to contact us, the call will go to voicemail. Everyone, switch off your cell phones now. Diana said we did it. She gathered them and instructed our waiter to deliver them to the hostess. We will pick them up when we leave. Dad, when you told me what Karen Wilson said this morning, it got me thinking. The lawyer stated that they carefully arranged it for our own protection. We should presume the same. Diane stated that because to what is available on the dark web, all of our computer devices and any other stuff connected to the Internet would be switched off and unplugged until they have been professionally inspected for viruses. 
After dinner, after we picked up our phones, I locked them in the trunk while we drove to Cricket to obtain new numbers and phones. I decided to purchase one extra and not activate it until the girls went to school on Tuesday morning. I handed Diane an extra cell phone from his Wilson and asked her to explain why. On Tuesday morning, I went to the bank, canceled all of our joint credit cards, and withdrew the remaining funds from all of our joint bank accounts, effectively closing them. I erased my name from them. I deposited the funds in 90-day certificates of deposit in the names of my wife and myself. The bank gave me printed confirmation of everything I did once I copied the set for myself. On Friday morning at 9 a.m. in Maryland, I drove them to the lawyer's office. I emailed my wife, Mira, a recorded phone call with a former co-worker from my old cell phone. It read, This is the last time I say I love you. I then factory reset all of our old phones. Before leaving them at the nearby park, I made sure to delete any contact information. Mira was with Sylvia when she got the SMS message. They both overheard his talk with her previous employer. Mira said, Darn! He learned about my real employment around 9.15 a.m., Maryland time, as directed. At the corporate office in Maryland, the waiter handed them everything while recording it on tape. Mira was astonished when she opened the envelope. She'd just got. It featured a notice that Dean was suing for divorce on the grounds of adultery and desertion after her Facebook page claimed she was in a wifely relationship with Sylvia Smith. He knew everything. It contained four pages of information to be given on the first day of trial. They even identified the adult store they visited and the items they purchased at 9 a.m. our time. I went into our cellular operator's office to report that four phones were missing and requested that the numbers be terminated on Monday morning. Then I paid my current bill in full. Rebecca and I were at work, examining what I'd done. I asked her to double-check with fresh eyes in case I had forgotten something. You recognize that they will eventually have to come to you. Rebecca stated that their legal difficulties are in this state. I don't think they comprehend that your daughters are of legal age and can have their own legal counsel. Fortunately, we are one of the few states that still allows you to suit for dissolving familial connections. I can image what she is doing. Mira will phone our old numbers, trying to get in touch and find a way out of this position. I mentioned that I had arranged for copies of her lovers and Facebook sites to be given to her parents, sisters, and brother today. When they open them, her family will be unable to refute what she did. What does your daughter want from all of this? Rebecca asked. Diane seeks vengeance. She can't stop thinking about my mental condition that night. Diane believes no one deserves to be treated that way. Dawn and Darcy feel their mother purposefully abandoned us all. I indicated that all three of them felt they needed this confrontation. They're having trouble accepting the reality that their mother lied to them about everything for so long. Darcy explains it beautifully. If she did this to us out of love, how will she treat us if she hates us? Rebecca, a mother of daughters, was digesting my words. She has seen it from both sides. I could see her pain and sadness. Well, Mira may not realize it now, but she does. She has lost contact with her daughters forever. Rebecca stated that there is no turning back from here. The scars of your daughters will forever remain deep in your soul. Rebecca, I didn't see it. But you're right. I said the worst thing I ever saw was when two girls who hated each other got into a fight. They were dirty, cruel, vengeful, and wanted revenge. When two men fight, it's over. When it's over... A woman never forgets and doesn't let go, doesn't it, boss? She responded. You are a very wise man, sometimes. Diana Roberts went to school that Friday morning, only to be called out of class during her first period into Karen Wilson's office. Borrowing a friend's laptop the night before, she scanned all copies of her two sisters and her own documents related to their lawsuit against Sun America Life Insurance and their two employees, Mira Roberts and Sylvia Smith. All information from Facebook was also scanned. She also sent a copy of the court order requiring Sun America Life Insurance to keep two employees in their current positions until all legal matters are resolved. After transferring the data to the flash drive, it was ready. Are you sure you want to do this? Asked Karen Wilson. If we continue, we won't be able to undo this. Everything on that flash drive is already in court. Records, Diane said. What makes this a new story is that in the eyes of society, we are still minor children. 
I have a one-page letter with my signature saying that, as a law student in the twelfth grade, I discovered a state legislation that permitted my sisters and myself to take this action. Karen Wilson created a new email address with a fictitious name and began a fresh email. Typing a few words yielded the email addresses of 26 distinct news organizations. After downloading Diane's data, she entered on the phrase, Three Underage Children Taking on Corporate America. In the letter's body, she wrote, Please find copies of the legal lawsuit filed against Sun America Life Attached. Diane Dorn and Darcy Roberts filed on behalf of Sylvia Smith, President, and Mira Roberts, Regional Manager. She clicked after making sure everything was correct. Send Diane, then watch her close the email account. When it hits the media, it only takes one to make big news. Karen stated that depending on how things play out, it will result in a domino effect. That is what I am banking on, Diane remarked. I want to annihilate the woman who once was my mother. Many thanks. I will return to class. Karen has grown close to Diana, and if all goes well, she will become a well-known lawyer in her field. That's her choice. Karen was unsure if Diane realized the exposure she was generating could save Sun America's life. The stock price is expected to tumble. Some customers may cancel their policies on the spot after receiving service on this day. Sun Life will rush to check and study divorce law because it is not their area of expertise. Diana appeared to be attempting to corner them. She has done an excellent job thus far. Two hours later, it became the day's top story. Local branches were swamped with calls demanding that policies be canceled. Business talk shows began to address the damage caused by the president's lawsuit. As a result, their stock values started to drop. Sylvia Smith was discovered to have been an open same-sex lover for many years. Mira had been attempting to reach her husband ever since he texted her. When she contacted his office, her cell phone went to voicemail or displayed a busy signal. She was informed that he was absent from work for the entire day. Everyone in the corporate office was in a panic. Mira and Sylvia had expected a divorce, but not this manner. She was really cautious to keep everything separate. Karen Wilson should have contacted William Roberts. Three film crews arrived. Luckily, he answered the first ring. Sorry to bother you, Will. Karen stated, We have a problem that must be solved. Are they girls? Are they okay? I inquired. Yeah, they're fine. Diane devised a strategy to disclose a pending court case to the mainstream media, anticipating it would go viral today or tomorrow. Karen mentioned that we currently have three news teams with more on the way. Crap, I admit. Any suggestions other than to come and escort them? Karen replied, not really. She's going to have to confront them sooner or later. I'll collect them all in my office, so the four of you may talk about how you're going to approach this. I will go there as soon as feasible. Keep an eye on me since I could have to perform the part of my life. I stated that I parked my car in the teacher's parking lot and exited, headed toward the main doors. I heard a voice from the news crowd. People believe it was the father. My girls and I left about ten minutes later. Diane walked directly towards the press reporters. We all stood next to her. Diane stated that she will make only one statement on behalf of the family until the court cases are resolved. We will not do interviews or answer questions while the case is pending in court. Please let me know when you're ready. The reporters gathered and signaled her to begin. My family and I realized that my father's wife and mother, Myra Roberts, had been living a double life for at least eight months, and the question we all had to ask ourselves was which one was real and which was not. And the fact that she was unable to be open and honest with the four of us about her personal and professional circumstances. This compelled us to hire a detective agency. They discovered that she was living in Maryland with a man called Sylvia Smith in a wife-to-wife -wife relationship. They both publicly recognized their relationship via newly discovered Facebook sites. Diane asked, this begs the question, are they legally married? If that's the case, then my mother, Mira Roberts, is a bigamist because she never planned to tell us the truth. We as a family are compelled to assume that in her eyes, we are a life that is not real. We discovered that Sylvia Smith is not only her lover and boss, but also the president of Sun America Life. It makes us wonder if Mira Roberts was promoted because she gladly gave up her legs for her. If she did, she would be nothing more than an approachable girl who is compensated for her services. Diane asked if my mother was the same love lover her entire adult life. Was my father merely a front to conceal her desire for children? Did she ever really love him? Did she ever really love us? 
Why doesn't she recognize us as her daughters in another life? Is she ashamed that she even created us? We sisters agree that based on what we have learnt, Mira Roberts, our mother, has dead. This is the new reinvention. Mira Roberts is unknown to us and will never be. That is why Mrs. Roberts and Mrs. Smith's mess is being taken to court. We turned and returned to my car. I felt varied emotions, ranging from pride for my daughter to shock. Diane brought up moral and legal considerations that I had never considered, destroying Mira's chances for the future. We drove for two hours to ensure that we were not being followed. Each of us was immersed in our own thoughts. My father checked to ensure that our technological equipment were safe to use. There was nothing found. Sylvia called Mira on her cell phone, telling her that things had become worse. Something just happened on television that you should watch. Mira entered her office. Sylvia hugged her warmly, adding, Remember that I love you. She rewinded and paused the television. Mira claimed she was ready. She hit play. It started with her husband and three girls at the main entrance of their school. By the end of the world, it had broken down. Her eldest daughter completely wrecked the situation with a single comment. Regardless of what she tried, she detailed all she had done in her life. Sylvia was unable to calm her down. We stopped to eat at a little diner approximately an hour away. When I tried to pay the bill, I was told it had already been paid. I paid regardless. And the man stated that he was the owner and wished to thank our family. For what purpose? You said something today. Your daughter was talking to a society that needed to see the other side of things. Maybe my ex's opinion will alter if she hears this. Son America Life's lawyers were incensed. Mira's daughter asked questions that no one could honestly answer, and they knew it. One person's morality differs from another. Was Mira promoted for opening her legs for Sylvia? That wasn't the question. The challenge is how to prove that this did not occur. What was most aggravating was that a 12th grade student who took one law course every day brought questions that made it clear that the corporation was trapped. Many attorneys struggled to package them properly. They were in desperate need of a kiss. And it was quite painful. As soon as the school day finished, the principal brought all of the teachers together for an emergency meeting. The director was pleased that, given it being a Friday, the school would be empty in minutes. He turned on the television and played a video of Diane chatting with reporters. Karen Wilson was pleasantly impressed. Diane took her counsel seriously. To accomplish this, she needed to stay focused, resolute, and strong. The director then drew her attention when he revealed they had inquired about her 20 times. She was just offered two grants if she planned to practice law. Others have inquired about our school because they are interested in supporting. I just want to commend Mr. Jim Spears and Karen Wilson on their participation, one for efficiently teaching the law and the other for mentoring her. Mira eventually calmed herself enough to contact her cell phone. He called, and it was answered. Hey, it's $1.44 per quarter. I am in my customary spot, said the voice she did not recognize. Who are you and what are you doing on my daughter's phone? asked Mira. The person on the other end of the line ended the conversation. She went back to her previous Facebook page and attempted to reach her daughter that way. She quickly realized that she had been unfriended and blocked. She used the same procedure with her other daughters to discover them in the same way. It was fair to expect that Will would have done the same. She summoned her folks to come home. Her father replied. Welcome, father, Mira responded. Hi, Mira, her father replied. Let me be clear. We witnessed our granddaughter's statement. We've seen printed Facebook pages for both your loves and you. Send them all to us. And we remember the reason you told us you were leaving Will, our daughter. However, I have to agree with my granddaughter. Mira, we do not know who you are anymore. You're no longer alive for us. Her father hung up. Mira fell unconscious again. Instead of returning home, my daughters and I chose to spend the night there. Grandfather... We all bought enough clothing to get us through the weekend. This provided us an opportunity to renew our collaboration. I texted Karen Wilson to let her know we were okay and where we were. I sat in my father's office staring at what I did and didn't understand. My daughter's words to a reporter called my entire marriage into doubt. When my mother arrived, I was trying to find out which realities I could accept. My mother said quietly, it wasn't all a lie. If this were the true... 
your daughters would not be standing with you. It's normal to have questions about everything. Remember that you had a good life before Mira became emotionally connected with Sylvia. What is the role of emotion here? I inquired. Do you think their romance began because of emotion or desire? The mother answered, At first I'd say friendship, then desire. When Mira was at headquarters, they appeared to be together 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Their friendship developed. They got close. It simply takes one too many drinks to cause things to happen. If this happens initially, there is a sense of remorse and humiliation. Mira may have drank more to relieve the agony, allowing Sylvia to begin seducing her thoughts. To demonstrate that you care, begin with a light touch or caress. Are you saying that Mira's actions were not intentional? I said, raising my voice. Not right now. No one plans to fall in love. Mom explained that it just occurs. In the end, she acted intentionally. I don't think she considered the price. Otherwise, she would not have terminated the marriage in this manner. Mom and Mira had planned everything. The two of them concocted a tale that they believed would sell. They intended for us to gradually drift apart until one day someone appeared to serve me. I stated this manner. Mira could keep their relationship hidden until the divorce was finalized and their secrets safe. Once our daughters accept the divorce, Silva will be presented to them as a close friend. How did you come to know that? Mom inquired. Seriously? Her brother contacted me this morning after getting records of Sylvia and Mira's eight-month romance. He added that Mira informed them a week before her departure that she was receiving training. She discovered out I was having an affair. According to Mira, we've been trying to sort things out for the past two months but haven't gotten far. It finally came out. That is why she is leaving me. Do your daughters know anything about this? Mom inquired. Now we know, said three voices. Both Mom and I turned to look. All three of my daughters heard everything. Damn it, Dad. Don explained that Mom was preparing you to be a scapegoat. If she had walked away with it, we would have believed her. Darcy stated that she intended to harm our friendship with you. I looked over at my mother. Her complexion was white. I rushed in and caught her before she fell. On Saturday morning, my father and I got up early. We went to see my place. The reporters were seated there waiting for us. We eventually drove past a nearby dealership we owned, only to find more individuals seated there. Good thing I shorted some Sun America livestock on Thursday. We'll need money to buy a new home, Dad stated. Unless we can figure out how to keep those dogs away from us. Dad, go to the dealership. I'll walk outside and talk to them. We both know what I'm about to say. We'll reach Mira and her mistress. So, I suggested, let's give them something to think about. He parked in and I got out and approached the media. I made certain that our dealership name would be visible behind me if I was being filmed. How are your girls faring? Asked an ABC representative. I believe they initially blamed themselves, as do most children. Then, as they learn and accept, they begin to wonder if everything their mother taught them was a lie. I said that they are looking for answers from me, but I do not have them. It's not easy to describe. How did you discover this? That was the next question. My wife texted me two weeks ago on a Friday saying, Come home, we need to talk. I answered. I asked, Where are you? She remarked this while on her way home. Something seemed wrong. So I contacted the place where she worked. Let me relive the talk. They actually paid attention. You must realize that at the time, I believed she was merely an assistant branch manager and nothing more. When I got home, she told me that she was being pressured to go to corporate headquarters for three months to replace a woman who was going on maternity leave. We now know that none of this was accurate. I stated that the Friday following my daughter's testimony, her uncle, my wife's brother, contacted to inform me of what Mira had told them. Mira discovered I was having an affair while she was at headquarters for a month. She returned home unexpectedly in an attempt to save our marriage. However, it did not work out. Is she leaving me? I proceeded. It appeared that Sylvia Smith and Mira were conspiring to fire on me in order to drive me insane. Mira would continue to go back and forth, gradually giving the appearance that frequent flying was straining our relationship and causing us to drift apart. She planned to file for divorce and give me notice as soon as it appeared that I had stopped trying that way. Once our daughters agreed to the divorce, Sylvia could be introduced as a close friend to their family and our children. I explained how they failed when we uncovered their identical Facebook pages. 
I had completed. Do you believe they were trying to make it appear that you were not collaborating with her? Asked the reporter. It appears that blaming me for breaking our marriage will permanently harm my relationship with my parents and girls. I spoke aggressively. For what reasons? Don't know. Perhaps you can discover a way to ask them. Was the goal to use my daughters as weapons against me? Based on what I know, it appears to be the case. Did Sylvia intend to introduce my daughters to an unorthodox lifestyle in every manner as she did with my wife? With that, I returned to my father's car and climbed in. My father smiled widely. He'd heard everything. Will your year of commission-based work pay off? He said proudly. You pose questions in their heads, which they will struggle to answer for days without making any allegations. You handled it in such a way that you came off as a man who was merely trying to protect his girls. I laughed for the first time in days. Dad, no judge will let Sylvia or Mira speak to these girls without a third party present. True, but the fact that you positioned Sylvia as the aggressor puts more strain on the business, its professionalism, and personal relationships. Indicating that she is homosexual was pure genius. It also places greater accountability on the firm itself. He mentioned that we got home just in time to join the ladies for brunch. We stated that media were still camped outside our house and dealership. My mother decided that it would be a girl's shopping day out of town. Dad was going to play golf, which is clearly not my game, so I decided to spend a few hours at the office. Dad advised me to use his vehicle if I wanted to go out in case they were watching my automobile. Miss Wilson called just as I was about to depart. She wanted to talk about the girls and their return to school on Monday, so she suggested they meet for lunch and discuss it. I consented because the company of someone outside the family was exactly what I required. I instructed her to text me her address and I will pick her up. I hope you don't mind. I spoke. I'm wearing denim. She laughed and said it as well. I stepped out of my dad's truck and approached her door. When Karen heard me knock, she opened the door. This morning I recorded your media statement. I thought it was fantastic. Would you like to see it? Questioned Karen Wilson. I happily responded. Karen turned on her direct TV system when she discovered it. She pushed the play button. It was succinct, direct, and straightforward. I appeared to have no answers, only awareness of what had been done, but not why. This has been a topic of conversation on most talk shows throughout day, prompting concerns about their actions. This recorded phone conversation demonstrates how deceptive their behavior was toward you. It made you untouchable. Karen smiled emphasizing that you and your family had no idea what was going on until the last 14 days. Really, all I was trying to do was divert the media's focus from my family. I said that I was driving my father's truck because they had parked in front of our house the night before, preventing us from getting home. What would you want for dinner? She knew the location was not well known, so we could enjoy some privacy. Karen told me what occurred yesterday at school— I was shocked when I took my daughters out, but I informed her that I knew Diane intended to continue practicing law. She inquired as to how they were addressing the matter. We've all experienced moments when our genuine sadness pours out. They were devastated to learn that their mother had falsely accused me of having an affair and used it to justify our divorce. Karen stated that it must be difficult to accept. I stated that it helped me comprehend the challenges that politicians face on a daily basis. The truth doesn't matter. It all depends on someone's emotions. I honestly don't know. And Sylvia's intentions or ambitions. I just know I need to keep pushing since none of them have demonstrated a willingness to speak the truth. We ended up going for a long walk in the local park before I drove her home. It was good to have someone to talk to who didn't judge, but offered help when needed. Karen became one of my friends. When I returned, everyone had gone home to my father. The girls had a lovely day shopping. Every child hugged me. Darcy said, Daddy, I smell a woman's perfume. So who exactly is she? I spoke. It was simply a friend. Mom offered me a beer and whispered in my ear that I should come into the den and watch the news. Things are becoming increasingly fascinating. If you want to cause a disturbance, simply ask questions that cannot be answered. This appeals to both liberals and Marxists. My brief comment deflected media focus away from the day's political issues. They spent some time discussing the morality of my family's position. 
What will the courts make of Sylvia Smith and Myra Roberts' apparent attempt to introduce youngsters to alternative lifestyles? Is this considered corruption? It was discovered that the same lovers attempted to undermine me with their plans. Sylvia was completely devastated. Her father called to report Mary's husband's statement, stating that the board of directors had scheduled an emergency meeting. His view of what was going on generated numerous issues. As a result, Mira and she watched TV while waiting for it to rerun. They recognized when Mira's husband's comments were hurtful, especially when he questioned what Sylvia had planned for his children. Sylvia stated that the only thing keeping her career intact was a court injunction. If the board could fire me right now, they would do so. He appears to be an indecisive man. There are just so many questions. Who is doing his utmost to keep his children safe? He made it appear as if we had everything under control from the beginning. Mira blamed me because I couldn't tell you I had stopped loving him a long time ago, prior to my meeting with you. I wrote to the father about your daughter's ages. Shiva stressed that practically all of them are grown-ups. Your husband was astute. He knew how the media would handle the situation. True, but the root of all this was how I handled my circumstance. This is something you and I both know. I overthought and lied in order to relieve people's pain. I receive what I deserve. You are completely innocent. We are both aware that I sought you in order to let the hidden me to emerge. Mira, you took far longer than I did to realize that you can no longer live a lie. Sylvia, I was attracted to you for years without realizing it, so I kept my distance. Finding you in that gay club that night alone prompted me to find out. You sat down and joined me that night. I knew that was why I invited you to my hotel or home. Mira said, Making love that night freed me. Then I knew that I'd never be able to return to the shell from which I'd escaped. I completely understand. However, the cost of this has yet to be decided. Dean, Sylvia explained, your husband, like your three daughters, is naturally offended, but for different reasons. Your behavior makes people wonder who and what they are. Dean would have to believe that in your views... He was nothing more than a piece of junk that you'd been using for over 20 years. This fact has killed many people and drove others to suicide. But I still love him. But I never felt in love with him. Mira stated her name. This is what the woman who was found sleeping with her own brother by her husband is saying to defend her behavior. Sylvia stated that it does not matter what you say or do right now. You're only going to dig yourself a deeper hole. What do I do? I still desire a relationship with my daughters. Mira said that Dean would always be in their life. We need to figure out how to fix this situation. Dean has shown everyone at home what he knows. Sylvia stated that you exacerbated the situation by lying to your family and blaming your husband. He does what he does because you gave him no option, not out of retaliation. In order to safeguard your reputation, you directly defamed him. Your daughters are your first concern. They watch you destroying your entire family to be with me. Silva watched as Mira went lost in thought, unsure what to say. Mia represents conduct, no matter how you look at it. Changed connections and people's lives forever. The trouble was that Mira always regarded Dean as a brother, rather than a lover. So, when they made love, he gave her his entire physical, emotional, and mental being. He created love in her eyes. It was simply a physical act to gratify her desire. She saw it. Mira was unable. She felt sad for Dean. He did not deserve it. No one did. Sylvia observed a crowd of media personnel in front of their home. Dean and Diana were able to garner media notice. I was startled to find someone in the real estate office on Sunday. Amy Bronson immediately recognized me. In school, we studied together. I asked her to furnish me with comparable homes on the local market. She soon presented me with a couple pages. I listed my house at 20000 more than the average price. She agreed to communicate directly with my wife while I was signing the documents. She looked up and retrieved the phone number, Sun America's headquarters. I took the envelope and presented it to him. This is a handwritten note granting my wife the right to come into the house and take whatever she wants before it is sold. Inform her that my daughters and I will be removing our clothes and personal belongings by the end of this week. What she does not want to do is stay with the house. I mentioned you have my contact information. I am seeking for a four-bedroom house with a pool, a large yard, and privacy. Dean, is the home solely in your name? 
Or will I need her consent to sell? I asked Amy. It's exclusively under my name, so let her know that my lawyers will hold the monies in trust until the divorce is finalized. I answered, I will not do anything that will allow her to sue me. I said, I'd like this to end. Mira has already upset us enough. In any case, this is a condition where property is divided equally. Amy Bronson watched Dean go after saying goodbye. Dean was in severe pain. If Miro had always enjoyed girls, she did a good job at hiding it. Nobody was aware, if it was just an affair. Why did she advertise it on Facebook? Their entire situation made no sense. Dean, unfortunately, never will. This will haunt him for the rest of his life. Early Monday morning, I was alone in my office. When the phone rang, I had just finished pouring coffee from a freshly brewed mug, Robert's Ford Engines. Good morning, how can I assist you? I inquired. A man's voice answered. I'd want to speak with Dean James Roberts. Are you speaking to him? I answered. Can I ask who's calling? My name is Charles Anthony Smith, and I am the chairman of the Sun America Life Board of Directors. And you agree? I'd like to chat with you informally about my request to keep this disaster generated by my daughter and your wife out of the public. He claimed that we had not originally published the material. I stated that he was in the public domain in our neighborhood. My kid and I were simply attempting to settle the situation. As of this morning, it appears that we may be able to return home because the media has departed. I was told it was arranged by our legal staff, he claimed. Explain what happened at 11 a.m. on Friday. Karen Wilson called, and at my request, she was keeping a watch on them in case they had an emotional outburst. When she called, three or four news crews were waiting at the door. She asked me to get them out of school. I stated that this was the first time we were aware of an issue. The school requested us to try to get them to leave because they were disturbing lessons. I said, my eldest daughter made a statement, and we left. I wasn't sure what she'd say. After we departed, they described your daughter as determined and hostile. Her words were mostly directed at her mother. You ought to feel proud. Charles Smith stated that she posed queries similar to yours that cannot be answered. However, both were done to impress your wife and my daughter. Their conduct implied. Yes, I agree. It's a real disaster. That's only part of the issue. They told lies to themselves. It was premeditated and intentional. Just so you know, I have gotten written testimonials from Mary's family claiming that she left me because she found I was having an affair while she was in Maryland. This was her last visit home, a two-month vacation to attempt to save our marriage. I added... You know, I have six pages of email correspondence between your daughter and my wife over five days with their corporate email addresses, which was effectively a fabrication to lead me to believe Mira was coerced into accepting a three-month temporary employment at headquarters. Seriously, I had no idea. Charles Smith stated, I'm going to a board about this right now. I had no idea they were in love until it came out. Now I can see why you both asked the questions you did in your circumstance and I would agree. I'm not sure what the council will conclude, whether you or your daughter requested the injunction blocking you from firing them. Diane, my daughter, was in 12th grade and had taken law as an elective. I answered confidently. Tell her that I don't like having my hands tied, he laughed. She made our legal team look incompetent. Without the injunction, Sylvia and Mira would be fired right now. Thank you for talking. I can now be honest about what I know. When Rebecca walked in, I had to explain why I was smiling so big. Dean, do you realize he could have lied to get you out? Rebecca spoke. Why do you think I informed him about Sylvia and Mira's letters? If he knew about them and discovered I had made copies, it enhances the case that they conspired to deceive me. If he didn't already know, he will soon have copies of them in your hands, I elaborated. He can't prove that we got the media involved because if it had been us, the media would have already discovered it. Dean, be careful. They'll be looking for any legal way to get out of this situation. Rebecca reminded him. Amy Bronson just got off the phone with Myra Roberts. The conversation went surprisingly smoothly. Both behaved professionally. Amy could tell Myra was shocked to hear the house was for sale. Amy explained that after this weekend, she would appreciate it if Myra took what she wanted as soon as possible, since she needed to know what would be left with the house after the sale. Myra was surprised to learn that after the deal was closed, the check would be made out to the lawyers and would be held until the divorce was finalized. Mira asked her how Dean was taking it. 
Amy refused to answer, but told her that her soon-to-be ex-husband, her daughters were forced to move because of mainstream media. Amy wanted Myra to realize the damage she was doing to the rest of her family. The board of directors met behind closed doors for several hours. The share price continued to fall. The head of the legal department had to tell them everything step by step. It was clear that until the court cases were resolved, Sylvia and Myra could not be fired. Heck, they couldn't even be transferred to other positions. The council decided to try mediation first before going to court on all matters except Myra and Dean Roberts' divorce. It was decided to write a statement to the media to cool the situation. Breaking through the media crowd to leave their front door was a nightmare for the two lovers. Someone took a photo of Myra with a shocked expression and posted it on Instagram with the caption, The Moment You Get Caught. This led to a full-page story about the entire situation with sources. Mirror learned from the newspapers that no one in her family wanted anything to do with her anymore because of the damage her actions had caused. Sylvia said it would take time for things to settle before they could start fixing things. I was surprised to receive an advance copy of Sun America Life Statement, which admitted that only reason Sylvia and Myra were not fired was because a court order forced them to remain in their jobs until the legal cases were resolved. They spent a long time trying to shift public opinion by emphasizing that they did not condone any adult's deliberate attempts to corrupt a minor. What happened in this case may be known, but the visibility of this ongoing situation makes it clear that it must be resolved, which is why we immediately begin mediation. I called my father, who gave the order to sell his shares. This turned out to be the right decision. I went to pick up my daughters. Looks like we weren't on the front page anymore. Now there was another side. We went to our house and started packing what we wanted to keep. It was painful to see my daughters leave behind personal items that their mother gave them. We were going to stay with my parents until we found a new place. This house made it too difficult for all of us to live here again. We worked until we were exhausted, so we only finished on Friday. On Saturday, Dad and I moved everything into storage. Somehow we survived. Sylvia was angry at her father because the board of directors left them to fend for themselves. Both Mira and she were informed that once the matters were resolved, they would be fired as soon as they were informed of this. They both began looking for work. So far, the prospects did not look very good. On Saturday morning... While my daughters and I were looking at houses with Amy Bronson, she informed me that Mira would be flying out the following weekend to pack and arrange for delivery of what she wanted. She put a few people through it, but most wanted to see what was left before making any decisions. I broke the news to the girls' night on Sunday. My three girls went out and Diane took them. Karen Wilson and I went out to a lunch meeting. I learned from Sylvia's father that Mira and she were coming next Friday. I was worried that my stubborn daughter would clash with her mother. Karen and I were walking around the mall. I wanted to see the styles and quality of furniture being sold in the retail market. That's when we met Jace and Janet Sixsmith Mirror's parents. We bought coffee from the counter and sat down together. Their family was just as devastated as ours. I introduced Karen to them, explaining our relationship in a conversation with four of us. I learned how worried my daughters were about me. All three of them asked Karen to keep an eye on me when we found out about this. My father-in-law and I could not hold back our tears. We all agreed that if Mira really was unconventional orientation, none of us knew. I found out that the children wondered why they had not heard from them and learned that the grandparents kept their distance because they thought the children would remind them of their mother and therefore avoided contact. On Thursday, Amy Bronson took Karen and me to see a house that had recently come on the market. It had five bedrooms with two master bedrooms, a built-in swimming pool with an outdoor kitchen. I really liked the three-space garage with its open floor plan. It was available because it was a sale. After the owner's death, I proposed on the spot late on Friday evening. Sylvia and Mira arrived. They took a taxi back to what was our old house. Looks like my three daughters left her a surprise on a pile of cut-up photographs. They left all the sentimental personal items that Mira had bought for them. They wanted to send a message, and it was received on Saturday night. Karen The kids and I were having dinner at Ruby Tuesdays when I saw Mira and Sylvia walk in. My daughter Diane went to the toilet and didn't see them. Karen and I noticed Diane walked past their table and Mira said something. 
No matter what my daughter Diane, Mira said it made her run out crying. Karen watching this turned her head towards me and gave me a very sensual kiss. We later learned that Mira tried to contact her family, but it was too soon for them. Mediation failed. We went to court. Sun America Life appealed the court order and won because they publicly admitted their liability. The court ruled that they accepted liability. The only question was how Sylvia and Mira were escorted out of the corporate building with their personal belongings the next day. Their father forced to resign as chairman of the board of directors. We haggled back and forth, but we made a deal. I bought a house, and my daughters were delighted. Karen helped me pick out the colors we wanted and refinished some of the floors. My divorce was moving forward, and the old house was purchased by a mystery buyer for full asking price with a quick closing. Once the documents were signed, the lawyers held the funds in trust. Sun America Life decided to have the trial before a judge only. It was a one-day hearing. The judge didn't like that the corporation was trying to reduce its liability because it couldn't control people's personal behavior. Our lawyers implied that Sylvia Smith's position gave her the impression of being in control of the situation. When the dust settled, Sun America Life lost big. Each of my daughters received half a million plus legal fees. I was awarded two million. This was twice as much as my lawyers were willing to settle in mediation. The divorce was uncontested, and she was awarded half of our marital property according to state law. I never saw her. She never up in court. It turned out that the new owners of my old house were Sylvia and Mira. They sued their former employer and won. As for Karen and I, we just take it day by day. Thank you for taking the time to hear this story. If you enjoyed this essay, please like it and subscribe if you haven't done so already. If you have a story to tell about your or someone else's situation, please don't hesitate to contact me. Please take care.